It seems many people all across the world, including myself, have an infatuation with cryptic creatures. Whether you live in the city or you live out in the middle of nowhere, it seems you're bound to see something. If you have a story you would like to share in a future video, whether it be a cryptid story or something else, be sure to submit it at swantweller.net or the email you can find in the description down below. I would love to share your stories with everyone here in the swamp. It's stories like yours that keep this channel going. Now, let's get into these creepy and downright strange cryptid encounters. I always get goosebumps when I think of this encounter I had. I live in a village of around 200 people in Alaska. It was a small village so we knew everyone. We would always walk around, day or night, it didn't really matter to us. Living in Alaska, the fear of bears or wolves was greater than the dark. One night, I was visiting someone with my friend. It was winter. If you don't know, it only gets dark at night during winter. My friend asked if I wanted to walk. I rarely turned down a walk, so I said yeah. The road we were walking down had light poles, going both ways, but the road leads to a dead end. While we were walking, I wasn't paying attention to another one of my friends, who was running like an ape at us as a joke. We were laughing while watching him, not expecting what he would tell us next. While he was running like a gorilla, he had his head hunched down. He finally stood up when he reached us. As soon as he looked up at us, while he was catching his breath, he said, Whoa, what is that? And pointed behind us. The light poles were around 50 feet apart, but there was one area, I'd say 100 yards away, that had three of the lights off. In that one area of darkness stood this thing. I still don't have words to say what it was. The worst part was, it seemingly saw us the exact same moment we saw it. And it stopped. At the distance, we could only see a silhouette from the lights behind it. The body was thin as a tree and furless. All of the limbs were the same size. The head was over halfway to the streetlight despite the fact it was slightly hunched over. I'd say the damn thing was 11 to 14 feet tall. We all stared at this monstrosity for about seven or so seconds. Then I turned to my friends and jokingly said, Slender Man. We were still checking if we all saw the same thing. As we looked back, you could only see the arm going to the side of the road. We looked at each other, agreed to stay up all night and went to a community building where we stayed for the night. To this day, I wonder how such a thing can exist. In Alaska, during winter, at negative 50 degrees without fur. I've always felt differently about walking at night by myself after that. I stopped taking lightless shortcuts. I just don't want to see that thing for the rest of my life. The elders around our village talk about shamans a long time ago. I've always thought that maybe that had something to do with this monster. You're not supposed to tell people about someone who was a shaman, so there really isn't any history. I still think maybe this was something created. Our culture doesn't have any rituals or anything. We dance. I know many are sacred though. You cannot record them or take pictures, but I haven't seen any of those dances. Perhaps thousands of years ago, a shaman or shamans had other intentions. I wouldn't ever want to be able to find a reason to create something like that though. Some background to start. I was raised on a 200 acre farm in Virginia, and I've always been sensitive to my surroundings. I do not 100% believe in the paranormal aspect of cryptids, but I do believe in spirits. The farmhouse was built in 1775, and it was always active, beautiful at day, and creepy, almost unwelcoming at night. I cannot go outside at night on my 13 acres in Georgia, nor my family farm when I visit in Virginia. I have always been outside exploring, 
but can only achieve this during the day. I taught rock climbing at the age of 14 in Virginia for seven years, completed an eight-day outward bound course in North Carolina when I was 14, and I get out as much as possible. I am 35 years young, and I am a squirrel that will randomly pull over on road trips to explore new sites, rock structures, cemeteries, historic sites, etc., on the way to and from any destination. I am constantly camping, swimming, hiking, kayaking, fishing, exploring. I am not afraid to go outside, but always cautious and usually armed. This happened in North Georgia on a Sunday, December 16th of 2018. It was sometime around 10.30 p.m. I was traveling down the road, bringing yet another carload from our old house to the new one. The day was in the 50s, and a gibbous moon, which was 60% illumination, no rain from what I can remember. I was driving about 50 miles per hour, no other cars on the road, nor were there any streetlights. In my peripheral to my left, I saw a 10-15 to 15 foot long, dark brown to black object flying over the field very, very fast. I did not see wings, but what I did see was that it did not have feet. It had to be flying as it was at least 10 to 20 feet off the ground. By the time I look over, it was gone. I even swerved due to turning around several times and slowing down. I have driven this road for years now, multiple times a week, and I still look when I drive by. I do not know what this was, but I have spoken with the owner of Expedition Bigfoot a few times and he mentioned to me that last year that there were four reports of pterodactyl-like creatures being seen in my immediate area. I spoke to him around October of 2018 and this was prior to my sighting, and I spoke with him again last month as he happened to be a local park I was fishing at. I have more information, but I don't know how to express what I saw because I have never seen anything like this before and I feel I did not see enough to complete the picture. Later that night though, the coyotes screamed for almost 30 minutes straight, and in the past and to this day I have only heard them call for 5 minutes max. We have owned this property, 13 acres with a creek, for over 2 years, camped many times on it, and just finished our home build in December of 2018. Since we moved, 80% of the time we are outside. Whether it be night or day, I feel like I'm being watched, at a close distance. There has only been one time where these creatures stopped singing at night, and needless to say, I was inside within a few seconds. I am not afraid of what is out there. I am afraid of not being able to see what I feel like is almost stalking me. I do not know what I saw, and I know it was not a tilled dirt, leaf debris, or anything like that. I have tested this theory, and like I mentioned, I drive by this area multiple times a week in different weather conditions. Rain, moonshine, and sun. I look every time. I have never seen anything and I cannot recreate what I saw. Nothing even comes close. Believe it or not, I am a hopeful skeptic though. But one who wants to see something someday. But not see something at the same time. If any of you guys have any thoughts or insight as to what this flying thing was, please let me know in the comments. And thank you for sharing my story. This happened when I was 10, I think before my mother passed. This was the mid-80s in a small town in Texas. I was allowed to play outside in the summer till my mom turned on the porch light at around 8 or 9. If I could not see it, there would be hell to pay. I never knew a dog I could not pet even the ones that my older brother was scared of. I always would walk up to them, so I never had any fear of strays. I was also known to often bring home dogs when I found them. I was playing in the yard one night watching the fireflies and playing in the sandbox when I heard a bark outside my fence. It was a deep bark, from what I thought it was a big dog. I looked from the glowing fireflies wanting to see the dog. I saw a shadow of a large dog outside our chain link gate. It was massive, fluffy, and blacker than the night around it. The dog's head was down and I could not see its eyes at the time. I hopped out of the sandbox I was sitting in and walked towards the gate as the black dog stood there and opened the gate. That is when out of nowhere my dog Bambi, I named her when I was five so please give me a break, a mid-sized mixed breed came out of nowhere snarling and getting between me and this other dog. 
Bambi has only acted like this one other time dealing with a creeper, and that's a whole different story. As soon as Bambi showed up, the dog raised its massive head, growling a low guttural growl that I could feel as much as hear. I could now see two glowing red embers staring at me. I was scared and I could not move. My dog snarled, still and let out a loud bark. My mother blesses my dog all the time, and for some reason I think that may have played some sort of role in this. It's very unlike her, but out of nowhere my mom came out the front door right behind me. She saw the black thing in front of me and saw Bambi between us and she yelled that this is a house blessed by God and you are not welcome here. Then in speed that I have never seen in my life, my mom grabbed the back of the dress of my dog by her collar and yanked us both and threw us into the front door. But that thing did lunge at my dog as my mom pulled her away. It bit her leg and a gash was made. Blood was trailed into the house. My mom went to work stopping the bleeding and cleaning the wound the whole time praying the Lord's Prayer and Hail Mary. She also, after the bleeding stopped, went and placed salt lines down at the windows and doors that were outside. I did not sleep that night, instead sat with my dog in my bed and waited till morning. We took her to a vet as soon as the store was open. It did need stitches, and she was sick for a week. When it did, it healed and it left a little bit of a scar and the fur never grew over, but she is okay. From that day on, she never left my side unless I was in school. I think she saved my life. My mom also gave me an old small silver cross I still wear to this day. I've seen many more things over the years, but that one scared me so much. Though I still work with stray dogs and still do not fear any normal dog, that demon dog or hellhound, whatever it was, definitely freaked me out. Back in 2012, I was at an aboriginal camp in Wallambi, New South Wales. I had been there for five years prior to this experience, and this was my last year there. We had heard stories of these creatures called the Hairy Man, aka Yowies. From my best recollection, he told us that they were short, had six fingers, and completely covered in hair. However, one thing I had not remembered hearing was that they were said to take children through solid objects, never to be seen again. I was told this from my cousin when retelling him this story. Well, behind the camp, up a short trail, there is a cave where we could see where one, or a few, I can't recall, had put its handprint and some sort of paint on the wall. You could clearly tell by the structure of this handprint that it had not been altered, as it was a perfect hand, with one extra finger. Throughout my prior five years at this camp during the first night, we would be told of the story of the hairy man. Then, they would take the bravest of the kids up to this cave, and spend a few minutes in it, either alone or with a friend. I would go up during this time period, however, never alone. Then on my last year, in 2012, I decided that I wanted to get over my fear. I was sitting in the cave near the back wall with only a slight gap and a bit from the entrance with my friend and a new kid. They were about to leave, and I told them that I was staying, to get over my fear. No more than 20 seconds later, I felt a hand rest on my back. There was warmth and pressure, so I was certain it was a hand. I could clearly see the entrance and knew no one else was with me. I froze up instantly, and with a chill running down my back, what seemed like forever had passed, but it was likely no more than 20 or 40 seconds, until my ex appeared in the cave. Still feeling the hand on my back, I bawled my eyes out and demanded he got a teacher and elder. I got out of the cave safely but was visibly shook. I was always skeptical of the stories, but that night I knew they existed. It wasn't until my cousin told me about them taking kids that I realized I was incredibly lucky that night to even make it out of there. If it wasn't for my ex entering, when he did, I'm positive I would have been taken. This wasn't the only bizarre thing I encountered in that cave, but the only one that was an urban legend.
One of my earliest memories is really, really weird. I've had a few humanoid encounters throughout my life, but this one never fails to unnerve and confuse me. Especially now that I'm living out here where it happened. I'd really like some input on this because it affected myself and my cousin, and my aunt and mom. One day, when my cousin and I were both very young, my mother and aunt sat us down outside with them as they caught up. They were on a bench and holding on to us both. We faced the woods from where we were, and they faced the driveway. From our position, my cousin and I watched a pale creature emerge from the woods around this huge rock formation, aptly named the Big Rock by us. We often played on it. Then, it seemed to realize we were watching, and slipped around the other side very quickly. It was pale, thin, and shaped like a person with arms and legs just like ours and sort of crawled around instead of fully walking. It was also quite tall, but it could have been the size of a fully grown person. Many things are tall when you're that little. I can't say for certain anything else about it, because then I think I'd be fishing for details. I can't totally confirm. Those things though, are what has always remained clear and consistent in my memory. If we had a good look at his face, that detail would be lost to the ages. I know, according to my mom and aunt, that we made a very big deal about it after the whole thing happened. That my cousin and I became immediately unsettled, and that both adults may have seen something but refused to acknowledge it. I would like it if someone could help me figure this out. I am 100% sure we saw something that day. It was a big enough deal that we assigned immediate importance to the big rock, and we even named the creature. We used to call it Old Man Boney. For background, this happened in the Adirondacks of New York near Lake George sometime in the early 2000s. It was during the summer. The area is relatively quiet now and was even quieter then, with a fewer vacation homes on that road. It is also a wooded area. I would like to share a story about an encounter, and it would be awesome if you had any insight that you could possibly shed on this. So this happened to my mom when she was a child around 6 years old. She has a very vivid memory of it and told me several times in the past as well as we tried to investigate, but couldn't find too much. My mom's family lived on the outskirts of our capital city, and not far from their street was a huge cornfield where they used to play as kids. As she ran in there one day, she came upon a figure squatting in the corn. As she described it, the creature looked like a man, except his head resembled more that of a dog's head. It had pointy little ears and a flat face with a kind of flat nose, a bit square-shaped head, and some small eyes. It had dark bluish-gray skin with only an oily texture and it was wearing blue clothes which reminded her of an overall with a policeman's jacket at the time. This happened around 1965 in Eastern Europe. She has never heard of aliens and the family didn't have a TV or radio, so she had no idea what she saw. She just ran out of the corn screaming. When she told her parents, they said it must have been the neighbor boy with a mask, but my mom said that she is pretty sure the neighbor boy doesn't have bluish gray skin, and even though no one took her story seriously, she could never really explain what she saw, but never forgot it. Fast forward almost 40 years. I was already around 12 years old. I had already heard the story, but internet was still pretty new to us in 2004 and 2005, so we didn't really look for stories about dog-headed aliens, and the books my father had on this topic were all about big-eyed, tall, or small gray creatures. So my mom's experiences felt like something marginal. One day, around 2005, my mom comes home in kind of a shock, and gives me a magazine opened at a page with an article about types of aliens, urging me to read it. It listed a number of alien species, among them the ones with dog-like faces, and gave almost exactly the same description as my mother did. It was a general magazine, so not really authentic and we don't remember the researcher's name. Since then, I tried to look it up on the internet, but I either come up with myths about Sinocephali or something else and none of those really seemed to apply to what my mother saw. I 
I've seen this creature for a number of nights now on my way home from work. The first couple of times I just saw the reflection of its eyes by the side of the road before it skitters away out into the woods. At one time I saw peeking its head over the side railings along the dark mountain road I drive home on. If I am to try to describe the creature, I would say that it's about 40 to 50 centimeters tall, with a big round head and large green eyes reflecting the lights from the car. It looks like a small monkey without a tail, and I think it has dark brown or black hair that covers its body and head. The thing is, that there is no wild animal in Sweden that is known that fits that description of this creature. My best theory is that it is a troll or some sort of goblin. I have heard stories of goblins that live in the woods and burrows along creeks, but I never thought that I would see one, or at least I think it's a goblin. That is the only thing that makes sense about this, for as much sense as I can make of it. It's hard sometimes to believe your own eyes when you're faced with something you never thought you'd see or something you didn't think could exist. At first, I thought it was a cat or something smaller, because the first two times I saw it, I only saw its eyes. Thinking it a cat in this situation is something any rational person would think. However, as I saw more and more of it, I seriously started to doubt that it was a cat. Today, I was driving home on the same road, and my doubts were proven right. I saw it sitting on the side of the road just as I came around a bend, and had to brake as hard as I could. When the car came to a halt, the creature was about 4 meters away from my car, and I could see its eyes were staring straight at me. I felt like I became paralyzed by fear, and I could feel my heart pumping. It just sat there for a minute or two, just staring at me with those big green eyes, like it was trying to figure out what to do next. Then it turned around and ran out into the woods and I lost sight of it. I sat there for a while trying to understand what I had just saw, but I couldn't wrap my head around it. I don't think I will be doing much sleeping tonight. I will probably just be thinking of that creature and if I will see it again. I'm not sure what I saw tonight, but I think it might have just been a troll or something like that. There are many stories about trolls and goblins living in forests around here, and if anyone has encountered a similar creature here in Sweden or in any other country, please share your experience or knowledge about what it might be. I'm genuinely curious to know if any of my theories are potentially right. I was in my car one day heading towards a campsite. It was just me, my mom, and my brother. When we arrived, it was pouring heavy rain and it felt very cold. I also felt as if I was being watched. In the woods, this isn't an uncommon feeling, but this felt different. It felt like it wasn't an animal watching me. It felt like something else entirely. I kept looking towards the trees and I felt something watching me the whole time as we were putting up the tent. When it stopped raining, my brother wanted me to come and explore in the woods with him. But if I'm honest with you, I was very nervous. I eventually got the courage to go with him though. We were walking and as we were about halfway through the woods, I heard a crackling sound behind me in some trees. I thought it was my brother, but I noticed he was in front of me. I turned around and to my horror, this thing gazed upon me. It was a very skinny and deformed looking gray haired wolf. I wanted to run, but I couldn't. I was paralyzed with fear. I just stared into its greenish eyes while my brother kept taunting me to go. There was something very off about the creature. It kept me fixated on it. It was much larger than a normal wolf. It just stared at me at first, but then it stood on two legs, and that's when I knew something was wrong, because I was pretty sure wolves cannot do that. My brother ran first and then I eventually ran behind him. I didn't look back once. I was way too scared to do that. But when we returned to the camp, my brother told me that it could have been a skimwalker or some sort of wendigo. I didn't know what that was, so I searched it up on my phone. But when I did, I only had 8% battery left, so I was only able to see a little bit before my phone died. I saw the pictures and a couple of stories and I knew that the thing I saw was definitely a skimwalker. I was so terrified and after profuse begging, I was blessed with my request to go home. The vision of that deformed thing haunts my mind to this day.
This happened when I was around six or seven, I believe. I used to live in North Carolina near Cherokee. When I lived there, I was often up at my grandparents' house. My grandparents' house sits on top of a hill surrounded by a lot of forest, as well as a cow pasture off to the side of the road going up to their house. It was sometime during winter, and I was with my grandparents helping them shovel snow out of the driveway. I believe one of my aunts were there as well, but I can't remember if she just got there or if she'd been there helping us because this happened quite a few years ago. Anyway, I remember that I put down my shovel at some point and ran off as I had found some rabbit tracks. I went down the bank to where my grandpa usually parked his truck following the rabbit tracks when I saw another pair of tracks. Now, these tracks, these were different than any other tracks I had ever seen before. They were that of a human, but instead, they were kind of different. Instead of having rounded human toes, they were more triangle shaped. It was also bigger than what a normal human footprint would look like. Now, me being one of those kids that watch shows like Finding Bigfoot, I thought perhaps it was a Sasquatch footprint. But the triangle like toes or whatever, they put me off of that idea. I remember running up the bank to my aunt and grandparents and I immediately told them what I had found, but I don't think they really believed me, even though I had shown them the prints. A few years later, I remember bringing this up to some of my friends that I had at the time. I even went as far to draw a picture of what I remember the tracks looking like, but thought of them suggested maybe it was a bear. I knew for a fact there was no way this was a bear track. I knew that bear footprints looked like and whatever made those were not bear because first of all, the footprints looked like whatever this thing was was walking on two legs. Second of all, it couldn't have been a bear because my grandma lives in an area where there are no bears around and there haven't been for years, as they had been hunted or chased from the area. I'm still not sure what those footprints could have belonged to for sure, but over the years I've had a few more strange encounters. While they're nothing quite like this one, they're still intriguing to me and they keep me thinking about what could be lurking out there in the darkness, just beyond my grandma's house. I live in Massachusetts and I work at Six Flags. It was around 10.30pm on a Saturday when this all took place. Well. That night, I was getting off work and was sitting out in the parking lot area, waiting to be picked up. Now, there are two rows of streetlights on each side of the driveway where you enter into the employee parking lot. It's a long driveway and it kind of does a little S-turn at the end. Then, when you get to the end, you enter into a big parking lot with rocks and gravel on the ground. I was sitting underneath the pavilion, which is a rather long distance from the actual entrance. I wasn't alone but there weren't many people around so I just sat there waiting to be picked up. I was on my phone, doing typical teenager things, and I happened to look underneath one street light. I thought I saw what looked like a person in a black hooded jacket with black pants and black shoes standing underneath the light. They were not moving at all, they just stood there. It looked like it was wearing a ski mask, but its eyes were covered almost like how slender man's will look, but the height of a human. Let's say it stood around 5, 6 or so, and I was sitting there squinting my eyes. I thought maybe I was just seeing things, being tired and all because I am getting off on a late shift. I knew that wasn't the case though, because as I rubbed my eyes to try to wake myself, it's still there. Strangely, when my mom picked me up it was suddenly gone. I was looking around to see if someone was walking themselves home but no one was, and I was a little freaked out. I don't know what I saw but I know that it wasn't my mind playing tricks on me. It wasn't one of the co-workers because well if you haven't been to Six Flags, you definitely know that workers wear dark blue windbreakers and tan pants. At the time, I was scared, but I've grown more comfortable since I've never spotted the thing again. About a year ago. I was on my way home from purchasing some groceries on a quiet dark night. The way back home was fairly normal and nothing of note really happened. When it was time to unload and move everything to the house I got this weird feeling that is hard to describe. Now, let me explain the way my street is set up. 
I live on a cul-de-sac in the suburbs. We also live across the train tracks, so it's usually fairly quiet unless the train is passing through and blaring. Because we only have street lights on the main road, every other road is left to be engulfed in darkness, unfortunately. As I'm offloading my groceries, my garage door is open and is the only light to be seen amongst the dark housing area. Observing the sky around me, I notice a figure walking up the street. It's merely a silhouette from the darkness and the contrast of the light denies any fine details to be shown. But, for some reason, I felt fear. Whatever this thing is, it was walking on all fours. The thing has skinny and tall slender legs. It may be seldom, but not surprising to see animals wandering out, as we do live by the woods as well. But I thought it was weird as I had never seen an animal like that in this area before. The figure was unsettling to see, being alone in the night and all. Still curious, I saw the silhouette's neck move up, and I could tell it also had turned to look at me. Creeped out even more, I was ready to pack up as quick as possible. But then, the freaking thing starts approaching me. I want to say it ran, but I feel like that might be more of an exaggeration. Regardless, I shut off the light and closed my garage as quickly as possible and headed in for the night. I really did not want to meet whatever that freaking creature was. This happened two days ago, while my brother and I were metal detecting at an old homestead. It's deep in the snowy Minnesota woods near the Dakota Indian Reservation. If you know the climate, it's extremely cold. The thick, dense woods made it hard to see. My brother and I both are fairly familiar with these woods and both of us got very athletic. We were about five miles in the woods when I found a dream catcher hanging from an old white pine with a deer skull carved into the tree. The reason I believe this was a deer skull was because it had large antlers. About an hour later it was cold and about to go dark, so we decided that we would go home. But that's when we thought we heard our names being called in the wind. It was almost like a person but it was warped. It was almost as if it was a voice sped up and slowed down at the same time. My brother thought it could be my mom, and so he called out her name. No one replied to this call, though. This made me scared knowing someone or something could be out there with us. We turned off the trail and started to head back towards the homestead and it was dark, but not too dark to the point to where we could not see. About a hundred yards in front of us, there was a clearing with one tree in the middle. In this clearing... We saw a deer or what looked to be a deer. Me being a stupid 15 year old boy, I picked up a stick and threw it. It almost hit the deer, when I heard a blood curdling scream come from behind us. I quickly snapped around and let out a scream but no sound came from my mouth. 20 feet out of the clearing, where the deer had been, was an oak tree. The deer hung from the tree, its limbs severed from its torso. There is no way. Any animal I know can drag a deer into the tree that quickly, and if it were to attack, we would have heard it clearly. So, my question is, what killed that deer that night right in front of us? I was only six to seven when this happened, but I remember everything. My mom had gone to work so I stayed at home with my dad and little brother. My brother was playing with toys in the toy room while my dad and I were taking turns playing plug and play controllers. You will likely know what this is if you grew up in the early 2000s. Anyways, my dad had fallen asleep so I ended up playing by myself. I was playing Mappy, a game about a mouse collecting artifacts and avoiding cats. I was pretty far into it. But my brother came up to me and wouldn't stop bothering me about something cool that he saw, and he wanted me to see it badly. I lost focus and ended up losing, so I said fine, show me this stupid cool thing already, in the most annoyed tone a kid could give. 
Now, the one thing I left out about the toy room is that my dad had taken the door off and spun it around so that he could lock us in when we were bad. It was a pretty creepy room, mostly because it felt so empty and the light in the room was dim. My brother took me in the room and closed the door. I expected him to show me what he planned, but instead, he just turned around and smiled. I yelled at him over and over to show it to me, but he just kept smiling and then eventually, the smile turned into a creepy laugh. I got tired of it and tried to leave the room to get back to my games, but it turns out my little brother locked the door. I yelled at him once more, but more aggressive this time. He just kept laughing. I started pounding on the door to wake my dad up. Then, I noticed my little brother had gone quiet. I turned around. He was now sitting on the toy slide we had in there. It was a small slide for babies, but he had a much more serious face. I actually got scared at that sight. He never made a face like that before. Then he looked up, and I did as well. He was looking at the vent on the ceiling. Then, I noticed something slowly starting to poke out. It was white, like paper white, and it was all wrinkly and veiny. If I had to describe it better, I'd say it looked like the forehead of a bald old man, slowly poking out, but the skin was just too white to be human. My eyes started to water and my brother began laughing again, louder than before. I started pounding on the door rapidly and screaming as loud as I could for my dad. I didn't dare look back again, but I heard it. I knew it wasn't human from the horrible sounds I had been making. My brother stopped laughing at that moment. But, after that moment of me just pounding and nothing else, my brother let out a scream louder than I had ever heard. Like he was getting tortured. I still couldn't look back though, I was too scared. My crying and begging for the door to open just became louder. My dad then finally opened the door and I burst out. Only then did I look into the room, but there wasn't anything there, just my little brother crying and holding his leg. My dad went to check it out and he had a large deep cut on the side of his leg. I told my dad what happened but he just gave me a hit in the back of the head for trying to lie and my little brother, I could have sworn, had smiled at me again. But I didn't look too well if I'm honest. I grew up starting to think it was just a nightmare, like I've been told every time I speak of this memory. And maybe it was. But, my brother still has a scar on where I remember he had gotten cut, but I don't know if I believe it anymore. One time when I was about 13 or 14, I was living in a small town in southern Ohio. I was a scared kid and didn't like the woods after dark. I hated it when I had to take the trash out at night because I always thought that something was lurking there. One night my terrors came true. I had stepped outside to return to my garage as I was having a friend over, and that was where we were sleeping. I had a large metal rod with me because I don't like to be without a weapon outside. Out of nowhere, I heard a low growl. It sounded like a large cat, specifically a bobcat. I started to walk faster at that moment, but that's when I saw something fall out of the tree. Then I heard my sister's voice say that she needed help. I ran inside to find my dad and uncles and asked them of this encounter. They all got their guns out and hopped into my uncle's truck. They searched for about 15 minutes and found nothing. I was shaken from my encounter and was more worried when I heard they found nothing. Later on that week though, I saw a pale looking deer running on two feet down the road into the woods opposite of my house. I haven't seen it since, but I swear it looked at me and it spoke the same voice that I heard that night. I have seen many weird things and I hope to share them in the future. As for my friend, we went inside for the rest of that night. Honestly, I really don't know if these things are connected, but I can't explain this weird bipedal deer that seems to sound like a little girl.
This story happened to me when I was a little kid, around four or five years old. When I was this young, my family and I lived in Dallas, Texas at the time. I was acting up and being really annoying, as I was really hyper as a child. My parents told me if I didn't calm down, they would send me to the monster in their closet. As I was skeptical at this point, not believing them, I continued doing what I was doing. I can't remember what I was doing, but now I wish I had listened to them. Being fed up, they told me to go to their room and to keep the light off. I was afraid of the dark, but at this point, I still kind of am, so I sat there on the bed bawling my eyes out. I start to hear a sound coming from the closet. I wish I could tell you I wasn't scared. To be honest, I was terrified at this point. The door slowly swung open, revealing a human-shaped figure. It looked like a human, but thinner, and it looked to be wearing a really old mask-like thing. It was grunting and growling at me, moving with inhuman steps. I tried to scream from what I was seeing, but no sound left my mouth. I backed up to the window as it got closer, hoping it would go over the bed and not block the door so I could run out. Before the thing got any closer to me, I started to run as fast as I could. Much like a cartoon, my feet were running in place before I was finally able to move to the door. I flung the door open and ran out crying and I asked who they had helping them in a panicked voice, as I was a skeptic at the time. They looked at me puzzled and had a slight look of panic as their little girl was saying that there was another human in their room. Then, they chuckled saying that there was no one here but us. I must have looked pale and panicked, so they went to check. There was absolutely nothing there, but their closet light was on. It was a walk-in with the light switch on the wall by the door. I never saw that thing again, but I kept hearing sounds of light pounding on my walls and ceiling. This, as anticlimactic as it is, is the end of this story. Thank you for listening. Hello there, this is my first time sharing a story with you and probably my last. I live in northern Oklahoma in a small town. I've read the stories about skimwalkers and all those things that go bump in the night and I've even listened to stories here and there on YouTube. Now I guess it's time I should tell you what happened to my encounter. I was walking home on a moonlit night. Nothing seemed out of ordinary. I made it to the train tracks when I heard a tree branch snap. I looked in the direction of where it came from and I saw it. About 20 feet away, I saw what appeared to be a deer crawling in the open field. Now, one thing you should know about me at the time is, I was a huge gun fanatic, so I always carried a small firearm. I did the stupidest thing. I shot at it with my pistol. I missed and oh my god, it stood up on its hind legs. It scared the absolute heck out of me because I knew <laughs> after it stood up I just knew what it was I ran as fast as I could to my house the one thing that scared me the most was that it was chasing me screaming my name I finally made it to my house and I looked back and it was walking back to the tree line it kept going until I couldn't see it the one thing going off in my mind was should I go look for it tomorrow I couldn't sleep that night because, well, how could you sleep after being chased by something so demonic? I honestly thought that it was going to come back at any time. I know it's pretty straightforward, but that's my story, and I hope you guys can give me some advice on what I should do. Should I be hunting it, or should I leave well enough alone? Also, do you think this was a skinwalker, or is this some other kind of beast? I'm sorry I don't have a description more than it just looked like a deer that was walking bipedally. There isn't much going on in Pennsylvania, at least in the rural areas where most of our pastimes include drinking oneself to sleep and driving trucks at highly suspect speeds down narrow roadways. Generally speaking though, I keep preoccupied with hunting. There's just something about chilling in nature that I love. I find a certain serenity there that is impossible to find out in city or urban areas. 
If you don't live in the country, I don't believe you'll ever understand that sort of peace or why we love it out there. Anyway, on to the hunting season. The story takes place while I was hunting out and about in early November, in a forest in the foothills of the Appalachians. I wasn't very far from my home, only a few minutes. It was late fall and the leaves were beginning to stop falling. The writing of Harsh Winter wasn't clearly written on the wall, so to speak. I was hunting white-tailed deer on this particular day as I hit around in the foliage and scanned the area with my Winchester 30-06 in tow. The gun was most certainly overpowered for a deer, but when you're in bear and elk country, you can never be too safe. The trail was a new hunting ground for me. It was refreshing as the spots I'd hunt in the days of yesteryear were now becoming increasingly encircled by subdivisions and civilization. As I continued walking my path, I began to become more engrossed with the beauty of my surroundings and less interested in what was happening with the wildlife around me. This ultimately led me to rip over a tree root that was winding along the path in front of me. The tree it belonged to split down the middle and massive in size. Now, the story you should have ended there. I wish it would have. I wish it was just another beautiful hunt. Sadly, that just wasn't the case. Just past the tree, I was gazing at what was a rather unique smell. It wafted its way past my nose and I initially believed there was a dead animal nearby, which likely also meant a bear could be close. I searched behind the tree, but to my surprise there was no carcass. There was also no predator or animal that I could see in the area. The scene was a sight I wished to see. All around were matted clumps of fur, which spread across the area. There was also vicious black fluid which led into a hollow which was overshadowed by a titanic root that led deep underground. I'm familiar with sickening scenes and the brutality of death within nature, but the spell in the air was so nauseating, it was almost like it was unnatural. It was a thick, coppery scent like pennies in death. I felt myself retching involuntarily at the smell, and then the den ahead left me deeply disturbed. Although shaken a bit, I decided to continue my search for the deer I believe was still out there. As the day drew on and the sun beat upon me, I became less ardent in my quest for this possible deer. I was about to sit down and eat some lunch when I was overcome with an almost paranoia. I wasn't sure why but something just didn't feel right. Not even thinking, I looked around and examined my surroundings. I saw nothing and was about to take a bite of my lunch when it dawned on me that something was bothering me. There was no sound. No bugs, animals, wind, anything. It was deathly silent out. As the realization struck me and I began to get up, I heard the snapping of a very large branch roughly a hundred feet away which was then followed by an ungodly screeching. It was an impossibly deafening and terrifying screech. It was as though the earth itself split and hell opened up, just long enough to sum up the suffering of the damned in one ear-splitting roar. I was scared out of my mind and immediately acquired my firearm and scanned the undergrowth slowly. Something huge was moving across the forest floor. I, however, could see nothing through the falling foliage and so backtracked in the direction I had come in hopes to get a better view of whatever was stalking through the forest. It was as I ran I decided against the notion of getting a better view and instead kept booking it as I realized I would not provoked this thing at all and it was not stalking me. That left me feeling a little bit more vulnerable. I would finally outrun the creature, or so I believed, and was beginning to hear the sounds of nature again. I felt comfortable right up until I realized the sound dead ahead was now gone. Whatever was out there it clearly circled around. I wasn't outrunning it at all. It was intelligent enough to try to cut off my path of escape. Terrified at the thought of what might be waiting beyond the tree line, I scrambled off into a different direction, down into a rock gully. I eventually slinked away near a cave and waited, hoping to hide my fear from this creature. 
It was at that point I heard a demonic snarling above me. The creature was above me and I was terrified out of my mind, praying my heart would grow silent long enough for the creature to move on. After what felt like an eternity, the creature began to move on, but my gun slipped off the rock wall it was mounted against and fell making plenty of sound for the creature to notice. I could hear this thing's footsteps heading back as I painstakingly crawled toward the rifle. I reached for my gun and as I did, the creature did the same. Instead of the smooth shellac of my rifle stock, my palm met a coarse, ragged fur, caked with mud and attached to a lanky, sinewy arm. The beast screamed and as I shouldered my rifle and fired blindly out of the opening, I caught a glimpse of a yellowed fang and one blood-red eye, an eye that reflected a hatred more ancient than man, a hatred that said, this is my forest, you have altered it through your presence, corrupted it, and I was here before you, and I will be here after. Human willpower paled in face of such uncompromising malice, and I shrank back against the rocks, robotically cycling bullets out of the cave. I sat there, dead-eyed, doing this for a long time. Overnight and well into the next morning, over 18 hours of working a bolt and pulling the trigger. By the time I snapped out of my adrenaline-fueled haze, my mouth felt like a desert and my fingers felt as though they were made out of canvas stretched over dust. Shaking, I reached for my water bottle and gulped it down, spilling most of it down my front. Praying the beast was long gone, I inched my way out of the cave and ran as fast as my rickety legs would carry me, the two odd miles back to my truck, leaving most of my gear behind. Nothing pursued me, but the feeling of being hunted remained. I drove back to town at 80 miles per hour on a dirt road. My eyes were wide with fear and my hands gripping the wheel with white knuckles. Unable to bear the thought of my secluded home, I spent the night at a motel within town and a bottle of cheap whiskey and every light in the room turned on. The thought of the creature would not exit my mind. Was it a demon, loosed on earth by some divine mistake, or just an animal? A cryptid lost time in the memories of the trees. I didn't really know what it was, but I couldn't and still can't let it go. The fear eventually subsided, but as I sit at home writing this, I swear, hand to God, that I can hear a howling echo through the trees and across the mountains telling me that I may never rest, and I may never forget. First off, let me say I love the channel. It keeps me entertained at work. So, I was told that I have a... some sort of attraction for the weird, maybe. Like, I'm some sort of paranormal magnet. In my life, I have seen so many paranormal events that it's hard to remember them all, but there are a few that I remember like they happened yesterday. One of these events happened on a 130 acre ranch outside of Houston, Texas. My buddy, who we will call Dee for the sake of privacy, inherited this ranch from a family member who passed. It had been in his family for well over a hundred years. It had a long dirt road that went straight from the front gate through pastures of cows and then passed a thick forest off to the left that was great for hunting hogs and deer. We would go out and shoot guns and drink in the pasture, closest to the back of the property. I know it was not the most responsible pastime. One morning I woke up before the sun was in the sky, packed up some ammo, my 45 and my 30 6 rifles, and headed out towards the woods. As I began walking from the house, I started hearing footsteps behind me. All I had for light was a small mag light that was apparently dying. I thought maybe the footsteps were that of a dog. Perhaps it got out and I didn't even notice. I would stop for a couple of steps out of sync with mine and then it would stop, shortly after. I would swing the flashlight around, scanning the trees and grass, and I would see nothing. No dogs and no animals at all. I finally came to the dirt road that led to the back of the property and headed down it. All the while, these footsteps continued to follow. Only having light enough to see about seven or eight feet in front of me, I moved slowly. Something white on the ground, on the left side of the dirt road, caught my eye. I stopped and knelt down to see a ring of small white pebbles in a circle on the ground. 
I thought it was odd as it was private property and the only people on it were me and Dee, and Dee was back at the house passed out. I don't know if this was anything to do with that, but I saw something a couple of minutes earlier. I walked another couple of hundred feet and suddenly got an eerie feeling, like I was being watched. There was about a small eight foot tall hay shed to the left of the dirt road. To the left of it I noticed a shadow moving. I pulled my 45 and crept closer. This thing was taller than the shed by at least a foot, skinny, and almost looked skeletal. It was humanoid in appearance, if only for the presence of its arms and two legs that made it stick upright. The legs though. The legs bent backwards like a dog or something. Its head was bulbous like this they describe aliens. As I crept closer, now about ten feet away, my gun was still drawn. I flashed the dim beam of light in its direction and in a flash, this thing rounded the shed and in two long strides leaped over the entire road and disappeared into the darkness. This road is as wide as your regular neighborhood road, so needless to say it was quite the jump. I wish I could say that was all this and it was gone, but it wasn't. I wasn't brave enough to make a shot either because I was so shocked and trembling so bad that even if I had shot at it, I probably would have missed. The aura this thing gave off was pure evil. I stood in shock for what seemed like forever. I finally called Dee on my cell phone, who was still sleeping at the house in front of the property and frantically whispered, Dude, come get me right now. There's something out here with me and it's not human. Dee came out as fast as his hangover self could muster. From where I was, I could make out the headlights from his truck in the far distance. I booked it. He picked me up and took me back to the house. I was shaken up for weeks, always scanning the darkness outside, hoping to not see it again. A year later, I decided to face my fear and go looking for this creature that I believe is still out there. That however, is a story for another time. This happened when I was still about 5 years old, living in a country in Southeast Asia. Urban legends are common things here, but what I saw back then is unheard of and only my family knows about it. When I was still a baby, my parents didn't have their own house. My grandparents agreed to provide us with the house that was located in an open field village with only three other houses built and are about 500 meters away from each other. Even though the house was a bit uncomfortable being surrounded by tall grass in the middle of nowhere, we had no other choice. Five years had passed and we didn't encounter any problems. My parents always remembered to lock all the doors and windows, especially at night. However, one night around 4am, which was still really dark out where I live, I was suddenly awoken for no reason. Our room was facing directly at the living room and for some reason, my parents didn't like closing our bedroom door. Because of this, I had a full view of our couch, TV, and windows, all facing my direction. I noticed someone or something sleeping on our couch. It was still dark and the only source of light was from our bedroom lamp and the moonlight, so I thought it might be my dad. I looked over to my left and then saw that both my mom, dad, and sister were all sleeping beside me. This sent chills down my spine since whoever was sleeping on her couch shouldn't be in her house. At this moment, I was wide awake. I looked at the thing again and squinted my eyes to have a better examination of whoever was sleeping on our couch. As I did this, I concluded this thing wasn't human. It was big, like really big, about the height of a six foot person and the width of a grizzly bear, maybe even wider. I also noticed that this creature had really sharp edges around his body. Then, my gaze towards that thing stopped as the creature started to move in an attempt to stand up. I was so scared and didn't know what to do, so I just closed my eyes and tried my best to pretend that I was asleep. Not even one minute later, my three-year-old sister started shaking furiously out of nowhere. I immediately looked back at the thing sleeping in our couch and was shocked to see that it wasn't there anymore. My sister's shaking woke up my parents as far as I know. She was having some sort of seizure. This shocked and confused my parents since our sister didn't have any illnesses around that time. Regardless, 
my parents called an ambulance. As the ambulance arrived, my dad carried my sister outside the house. When we reached our house's front gate, my sister stopped having a seizure. Instead, she stared at something. Something was on our front porch. As I looked at what she was staring at, a cold sweat started dripping all over my body, and I was just shook at what I saw. It was the creature. This time, with its visible red eyes, full of rage, destroying my bicycle apart. I ran outside the house as we all rode to the ambulance. We still lived in the house for another three years after buying our own home. As far as I know, only my sister and I had seen whatever that thing was. Up to this day, I still have no idea what it was and I still have questions regarding that thing. What is it? How did it enter our house? And was it all in our imagination? And was it the reason behind my sister's sudden seizure? 13 years later, and the questions are still unanswered. I was a 15-year-old girl at the time and had recently just turned 15, and I was also very, very dumb. My story begins at home. It was around 10 at night and my friend and I decided we were hungry. We thought we could just walk four blocks down to the gas station to grab a quick snack, although it was quite dark out. As we were walking, we felt as if something was watching us, so we walked a bit faster, until my friend looks at me in a stutter. Do, do, do you see that? I turned around to see something crouched over on the sidewalk a few feet behind us. It didn't look exactly human. It was shaped differently and much, much bigger. We are now keeping our eye on it as we walk backwards when it starts to stand up. At this point, I see a big shadowy figure growing and coming towards us. We ran as fast as we could to the store and calmed down. As we began our walk home, we took a different route, but we still felt very on edge. We finally reached my house and got inside, and nothing was out of the ordinary. We were sitting down trying to understand what we just saw, until we heard my cat make a deep growl in the hallway. We turned to see that she had her hair standing up and was hissing. She saw something we didn't see, and it was very clear. She ran around in a panic and that just freaked us out even more. Finally, I decided to give up and knock on my bedroom wall. Toward the door, my cat was mostly avoiding. I heard these three knocks come back. That being said, my friend left my house, crying, and I no longer live there. I have had many, many experiences in that house, but this was probably the craziest one because it happened in front of somebody else, so we could actually validate that I was not crazy, and something creepy was definitely following us home that night. Now whether it was a cryptid or a ghost or something else, I don't know. But thank you for sharing my story. Thanks for watching this video. If you enjoyed these allegedly true, creepy encounters with cryptid creatures, be sure to hit that like button as it helps me out a ton. If you're new to the swamp, why not hit that subscribe button and turn on notifications to never miss a new video, as I upload them almost every single day and all things natural and supernatural. Honestly, these were some pretty good ones. Some of them were a little short, but I think they were all worth it in the end. There's some creepy stuff, and I don't know if you guys have noticed, but we're very close to episode 25, which is the next video, which is going to be a very, very long one. I don't know if you've also noticed, but there seems to be a lot of creepy bipedal deer creatures out there. Let me know your thoughts on that in the comments down below. If you have a story you would like to share in a future video, be sure to visit SwampDweller.net and submit your story there. I would love to share your story with everyone here in the swamp. It's stories like yours that keep this channel going. I appreciate you guys so much, and thanks for always supporting this series. I'll see you guys soon with another creepy video.